Good day, everybody. Oh, sorry. What? Little, little crispy there. Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Dan Otage, and welcome to the Challenger series. We're ra we're coming into raid fifty one, as you can see right on the screen, and it's uh, what do we have? Episode twenty five at this point. My goodness, it's been crazy. This is also I'm, I I should mention day. One of Puppy Watch. Military cable's not bad. Day one of Puppy Watch, which, uh... I'll explain what that means here in a sec. We took we took Jed in to uh, get a tooth that he chipped basically off at the at the gum out. Because I don't... I, it, it just... Oh, I know where I am. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of dark, sorry. So, Jet, our puppy, our dog, he's, he's not a puppy, he's like 10, years, 10 or 11 years old now, um, but, uh, okay, no, hold on, I need to get my bearings. I think, yeah, I think I know where I am, which is, I need to go this way. Um, so he was playing with the toy or something, and... He basically broke his tooth off. Like, one, one of those bottom, like, front teeth, it just came off. That was, like... That was, like, over a month ago, right? And we're like, okay, well, if it bothers him, I'll take him in. And it did. He hit his mouth. He hit his mouth on, like, one of our chairs or something. Just kind of playing around. And, uh, yeah, he started really crying. Uh, and then we're like, okay, we'll take him in. We took him in. He's like, yeah... It's going to cause him some pain if he hits it again, but it's not a big deal. We'll, we can take it off. We can take it out, um, you know, next time we have available. Sure. It's like, all right. So we scheduled it. It was about a month after that, <clears throat> which was yesterday. Uh, and then we took him in. And then, so we also, at the same time, scheduled him to also get this pretty big fatty tumor. And I mean fatty because it's, it, it was diagnosed as being mostly fat. Um... Not to not thought to be cancerous, but they were like, well, just in case, we'll uh, we'll take it out. We'll get it. We'll get it biopsied. The horse. We'll get it biopsied and we'll we'll let you know. We don't. Well, obviously, it's off for biopsy now. We haven't. We don't know the results of that, but uh, we're waiting on that. But the thing is, our dar our our vet is he's kind of old. So, I don't know if the procedure was supposed to go this way, but while the while the tumor got to be, like, maybe the size of a golf ball, like, half a golf ball, um, he has now, like, a giant cut that's, like, seven six to seven inches long across his body now maybe even more actually um because i don't know what he had to do maybe he had to like cut where it was connecting out or something i don't know but it would like it like was it was the where he i'll think i guess i'll think that where he had the tumor is cut and then like three inches on each side seem to ha also be be cut all the way so he's got like a huge gash in his side now and obviously he's in a ton of pain so he's loaded up on meds and uh he's he's not happy he's got a giant cone that he absolutely despises he hates having that on so he's uh he's kind of being a big big whiner but like obviously can't you can't blame the kid He's gonna, he's gonna be that way. So yeah, we're, we're, I've been up kind of all night. Um, not really dealing with it, but making sure that he's okay, because pretty much every time he moves, he's not comfortable. And then, because he's a big mama's boy, uh, he was sleeping out with me, because I, I had him on the couch while she went to bed, and then he, like, an hour or two later, he just started crying, being super upset, because he can't really walk. I think it's super uncomfortable, 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 uncomfortable for him to walk. But also, he uh, this pain meds I don't think allow him to really have all of his faculties. So um, 
so yeah, so I had to carry him to the bed, and then he was there for pretty much most of the night. Then, you know, we usually feed them around 4 or 5 a.m. So I got up to, to help Katie with that. Uh, I'll take it. And uh, he seemed okay. He was really hungry, though. That was the big problem. Was uh, He wasn't allowed to eat um, dinner. So, I mean, he, he had dinner, but he had a very early dinner the day before, or the night before the uh, surgery. And then, uh, and then he had to not eat afterwards because, like I said, he had his tooth out. So that we had to, they had to let that heal and stuff like that because he's got, I think he's got a stitch or two in there. I actually don't, I don't know about his tooth. He's got a bunch of stitches, but what really like kind of not uh, not really made me angry or, or upset or anything, but looking at the, I mean, it kind of made me upset that he has a giant gash in his, in his side. But a uh, big thing was like looking at the stitches. They honestly don't look good. Like I said, our, our doctor's old, and I think that really affects how good he is at certain things. So the sutures, in my opinion, and I'm not a surgeon, I, I don't, I've never sewn anybody up, never sewn a, a being, a, a, a live being up before, but they look kind of sloppy. They look like, they look like they're not really done very well. And that sort of bothers me, because it sounds like this guy's been in business for a very long time. I'm like, bruh. I know I know it's just a dog, and I know that like people seem to not really care too much about animals, but like I do. And I'd like you to like maybe, you know, do it properly. So if the stitches pop without him doing anything, without jet like going, kinda of going crazy or anything, uh I'm gonna be pissed. Not to mention the fact that it, uh, I'll take that. Not to mention the fact that he also, hold on, I gotta focus here a little bit, I don't forget anything. Uh, okay. Um, he's supposed to have his cone on, and all the way up until he gets his stitches out. And his stitches are supposed to come out in two weeks, however, they scheduled our appointment for three weeks out. So they're telling us that he, he they want to they want to keep the cone on that he absolutely despises for three weeks, and I'm like I don't know how we're gonna do that. So I think today, um, after after I stream this morning, so after work basically, I'm gonna go to PetSmart or uh, whatever whatever pet store is closest. <clears throat> I'm gonna see if one I can find a soft cone so that it's a little bit more comfortable, you know, just something that keeps him from chewing at his. Um, it is stitches, but also something that is not just this hard plastic cone. But, uh, my mom, I talked to my mom last night, and she told me about this donut kind of thing. So it's not a cone that goes, like, up and ab above the face. But it's a donut that, um, limits his range of movement so that he, he can't actually get to lick, you know, lick himself and stuff like that. So that might be a little bit more comfortable. I'll go look at him, see what I got. Oh, shoot. Beat the coin. Okay, ten minutes. We gotta go. Where am I going, by the way? Um. Oh, scav bridge. I should just go back then. Let's see what's in here. We don't have much else, though. That's the problem. Oh, we got some stuff. The Mosin actually should fetch a fair price, and the military cable as well. Oh, and the armor. Actually, we're doing okay. Let's just get out of here. I don't feel like risking it without my... Especially without my faculties in place. My brain is all... It's got no sleep. I've got no sleep last night. It's. I'm going to be honest with everybody. So I think I deserve a couple likes. <laughs> if you can. I'm just kidding. Uh, but if you want to, it, it does help. But Jesus, like... I don't know, man... We've been to this vet a, f a few times. He's had... So, he's had two surgeries now. He's had two teeth pulled out the first time. 
and then now he's had one tooth and the um, the tumor, the fatty tumor. Um, so that's twice with this guy. And then we had Kara, our cat, taken in for uh, for her tooth to be pulled as well. Because apparently that's just a cat thing too. Cats just have, they just get bad teeth like all the time. So had her tooth pulled. <coughs> And then, uh, both times, I mean, they've been, he's been pretty okay, but, like, he's never been, like, that, that office has never been super stellar. As, like, oh, they take, they feel like they've taken care of the dog. I'm gonna, I'm gonna count all this up, money up, and then I'll tell you why I actually am super pissed about yesterday. Alright, I will, uh, I'll be right back. Alright, we're back. Alright, I, I, first of all, not gonna lie, uh, I counted up all the money. First of all, that came up to like 671 grand, which was super good. Second, I I paused the recording for like 20 minutes. Because <laughs> I just, I, I went and I popped on a one peg stream and started chatting with him for a little bit. Because we're both, we're both on the no sleep party. Um, anyway, what was I talking about? I was talking about the thing that actually like pissed me off yesterday. And this, this, this happens every time, too, and I, I feel like we probably should have seen it coming. Actually, we kind of did see it coming. Katie said something about it before. Um, so, when you take your pet into the vet, and, and somebody, I mean, put in the comments, please, let me know if this is, like, pretty normal. Um, this, that hasn't, this didn't happen with our previous vet, but our previous vet was awesome when we lived in San Diego. So, you take your... You, uh, you have a day of surgery, right? It's like, hey, um, so... Uh, surgery's on this day. We open at 8.30, so you can bring them in whenever. But can you bring them in by 9.30? And we're like, okay. Is that when surgery's gonna be? It's like, we're gonna get we're gonna get surgery as soon as possible. Bring them in at 9.30, that way we're prepped and everything and ready to go. Like, okay. So, you know, I get it. 9.30, let's say, like, a couple hours go by and... Maybe uh, that's when surgery happens, right? Because, reminder, he hasn't eaten, right? He was told not to eat um, past 10 p.m. the night before. So I'm like, okay, cool. It's fine, you know, 13, 14 hours, no eating because of, you know, post-surgery and stuff like that. You know, it's just kind of how it goes. It sucks, but it's how it goes. And then, so essentially... We just sit, we have to sit and just wait for the call for when he's ready to be picked up. Mind you, they close at 4.30. So no matter what, he's got to be done by 4.30. The point is, and this has happened, this happened now, this is the third time, especially with the other two pets. We, uh, didn't get the call at all. We waited until 3. And then Katie was like, hey, is he, like, about to get ready to be picked up? He's like, oh, he's, um... He's going to be coming out of surgery in about 30 minutes. 20, 30 minutes. Um, you can come pick him up at 4.30, which is when, when they close, right? And we're like, so you asked us to bring him in at 9.30, which we brought him in at, at 9, I think. Maybe even earlier. Is somebody watching him? Um, it was probably like 8.45, honestly. We're like, okay. So you told us to bring him in. Hold on. Hold on. He unloaded all the ammo, too. Um, told us to bring him in. 9.30. Brought him in earlier. And you didn't get to him until probably what sounds like two, maybe one at the earliest, if it was like a longer surgery. So he waited there, probably bored out of his mind, because, you know, he's a dog. They get bored. Bored out of his mind. Hungry. Probably thirsty. Sitting there like, what the hell is going on? Probably stressed out. And you waited until how many hours later to then start the surgery? Like, what What the hell is going on? 
you know, obviously, we ask, we ask questions like, hey, what, what, like, what's the problem, what's going on, you know, but we're not gonna, you're not gonna make a fuss, because, you know, they handle your pet, you don't want them to mess with anything, you don't do anything crazy, you never know what's going on, and, I'm, and well, I mean, they're not cheap, but they're not, they're not gouging us, right, although it's still extremely expensive, um, so we kind of were just like, okay, I guess we just have to deal with that, whatever. But, so, the scheduling the, you know, three weeks out, this the whole waiting until whenever to, to actually start the surgery, I got, I got pretty pissed. And that's also why I'm not allowed to go into the office, the doctor's office. Oops. That's why Katie, I, I, I drive her there, I take care of Jet, I bring him out and stuff like that, but Katie de does all the all the stuff inside the office. Because if I go in there, I'm going to start actually probably saying shit. And it's probably just going to be a big headache for everybody, and I just, I just don't, I don't think anybody wants that. I'm a, I'm a pretty nice, polite guy. But like, dude, that is, that's uncalled for. That's just dumb. And frankly, I don't understand how it's not just cruelty. He's sitting there all day, and that's, I mean, not to mention, when you when you bring him home, they tell you not to feed him that night. Because, you know, especially when he had his tooth out. I say, hey, wait for, you know, wait for the, the wound to heal a little bit, at least, and then give him his pain meds in the morning with some food. So not not and, and you know it, under pain medicine often they're not hungry and stuff like that and i was that's kind of what i was telling myself i go he's probably not hungry because he's on drugs and stuff like this i understand he's probably fine and then we fed him this morning and he gobbled it all up he was so hungry he was so hungry so i felt terrible and then even more pissed and i'm like this so Hopefully he doesn't need another surgery for a while, but if he does, we're hopefully going to be able to find somebody else, man. Because it's, it's crazy. down below me. Where's he, buddy? Oh, wait, no, he's just looting? Dude, just, found the, just found the dead guy? I don't know. Kind of weird. Round smash, Mr. Rocks. Okay. So yeah, needless to say, it's been stressful for a couple of reasons, but mostly because that's pissed me off. I don't know, the whole medical field in general kind of makes me upset a lot of the time. Because in, in, in the, I think the frustrating part is, you sit there and you're like, people don't get into this field to screw people over all the time, right? It's like most of the time people at least try to get to this field because, well, sometimes maybe, because sometimes it's their parents just trying to pressure them into become a doctor. Become a doctor, you'll make the family proud, and all this stuff. And I, I get it. A lot of people in the medical field are definitely um, pressured into doing stuff like that. And that sucks. That definitely sucks, but, you know, you're in the field now. Let's take care of some stuff. There's a bunch of dead dudes here.
I want that armor back there, but I don't know if it's worth switching all that out. Plus, we don't have a whole lot of time. Plus, I don't know what that what that AI scab took. He took something. Well, he took he took obviously. I'm, I think they just take guns though. Gonna, we're not gonna be making that much money here. Come on, come on, come on. Here we go. Uh, we don't have a whole lot of time either. Nearly full of PS ammo. It is 7.62 though. Ten minutes. Um, we're probably gonna have to just book it after this. We can go scab bridge though. So hopefully we find something good here, and then we'll bounce. But yeah. Anyway, uh, you don't mess with people's dogs. Is the is the moral of the story? But also, if you're a vet, you know. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell, man? Horsey. Yeah, always look in the grass up there. There's there's always another spot. It should look like a PMC right now. Which is uh, a little frightening. Oh, that'll work too. Although, what jacket am I wearing? Yeah, not too much like a PMC, but kind of. All right, we're kind of full. We can probably just get out. Yeah, that's too much time. I'm just going to go. Because it's going to... For us to be able to loot and look at everything, it would cost us a ton of time. We spent a little bit of time um, looking through those bodies. And we had pretty bad spawn. But. This is okay money. This will be alright. Um, that might sell? Mosins might actually go for some money. Because I believe if you. Even if they're. Even if they're like pretty broken. I believe they're cheaper. You can sell them for like 40, 45 grand on the flea market, whereas like a brand new one's like, it's like 60, 60, like almost 70 grand. So I think, especially because it's bolt action, because the whole reason people buy bolt action, use bolt action in the first place is because it's meant to really not jam. Um, even, even in like the worst conditions. That's why people still use bolt actions to this day. It's far less likely to jam. All right, let me count this up and uh, I'll be right back. Alrighty, so that raid wasn't, you know, as good, but it was still not bad. I think it was not bad. Um, almost to 300k, so I guess we were missing quite a bit. But I think for the most part, it's been alright. So as you can see, we're up at 22 million. We broke 22 mil, let's go. Um, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. Sorry for the no sleep. Sorry for the crackle there. I appreciate you all so much. Uh, and uh, if you would like to see more, make sure you subscribe. With that. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day. Enjoy yourselves. Goodbye. Cue the music.